All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome to On The Stoa, my name is John and on today's video, we're gonna be talking about why it's important to live a life of virtue over vice. Now, with any discussion, it's important to define the terms that you're gonna be using, that way everyone is on the same sheet of music. So real quick, I'm just going to define what the, what the terms virtue and vice mean. So to start out, the word virtue, it means a trait of excellence that may be moral or intellectual whose refinement is held to be the good of humanity. Now, this word comes from the Latin word virtus, meaning all the excellent qualities of men, physical strength, valorous conduct, and moral rectitude. Uh, today, examples of virtue can be seen in, say, the Stoic chief virtues, such as courage, wisdom, justice, temperance, or even other ones such as honesty, endurance, those kind of things. These are character traits that exhibit excellence, that are highly moral. They, it exhibits high moral traits of excellence. Now, if virtue is something that displays high, moral, high morality, high morals, vice is the opposite. Vice is a moral depravity or corruption, a moral fault or failing, a habitual and usually trivial defect or shortcoming. Now, this word comes from the Latin word vitium, meaning a failing or a defect. And examples of vices can be seen in, say, gambling, laziness. You know, you have the seven sins of Christianity. These kind of things are vices which, uh, which stand to hurt people in both in the short term and in the long term. Now, why am I saying that it's important to live a life of virtue over vice? Well, to start out, there, uh, there is a concept in Greek philosophy known as eudaimonia. And this word, this Greek word means good spirit, good happiness, or good welfare. And essentially, this was the highest level of happiness a person can reach. The Greek philosopher Aristotle used it to refer to the, the concept of the highest good that a person can reach in his life. And Roman statesman Cicero even refers to this concept when he writes about the summum bonum, meaning literally the highest good. Now, there are different people who posited uh, ways to reach eudaimonia. You had people like the Epicureans or the Hedonists, um, people who said that you know a life of pleasure was the way to reach the sum total of human happiness. But then you had other people that posited that virtue was the way to reach it. And the Stoics were one of them. You know, they essentially said that virtue is what was necessary and was the only thing sufficient needed to reach eudaimonia. Aside from eudaimonia, I think there are three other reasons people should live a life of virtue over vice. The three reasons are self-improvement, improvement to your community, and essentially being able to find stability in chaos. So let's get started with the first one, self-improvement. Now, many people have vices that essentially stop them from being the best version of themselves. Say if they have an addiction, the addiction is usually um, had to cope for something, be it a trauma or something that they are lacking in another aspect of their life. These things are preventing them from growing and being the best version of themselves. The addiction is holding fast and keeping them from growing. Or say if it's the vice of laziness, right? Um, it's keeping them from essentially doing what they need to do in order to seize the day, to carpe diem, to uh, take the opportunities that they need to become a better person. And another aspect of virtue in this self-development is that it also pushes you to achieve your goals. Say if you want to start a business, right? This is your goal, you want to start a business. Most businesses, as a quick statistic, most, I think is 85% of all businesses fail within the first three to five years of their inception. With this risk, right? You, you're understanding that there's, that there's a risk and it might make you nervous because what if you're throwing everything into the fold? You're throwing your life savings. You're throwing all the money you've saved up into this venture that might fail. Well, then you have to have the virtue of courage in order to push forward through that fear and still do what you need to do to achieve that goal of starting the business and, you know, being able to continue it, even if things aren't looking good, even if you're fearing that, you know, I might fail within the next year, I might have to file for bankruptcy. Well, you know, the courage is feeling that fear, but still pushing forward and having that virtue of courage will help you attain and maybe even sustain your goal. You know, the other day I watched a video about this project manager who essentially wanted to start a housing development of tiny homes within his community. And he's, you know, when 
whenever they had the grand opening, he was saying how, you know, this this journey to create this small, tiny home community was just wrought with fears and setbacks, but he still pushed through. And so by having that virtue of courage, he was able to achieve this tiny home community and was able to better his community, better other people around him and be able to actualize his dream. I guess this aspect leads me into my second point that with living a life of virtue, you're able to provide improvement to your community. People don't necessarily live in a vacuum, right? We all live in this interconnected system um, with friends, with family, in a city, in a state, in a country, in the world. Everything we do has an effect on others. There is this Judaism Kabbalah phrase, uh, and it goes, as above, so below, as within, so without. And what this means is that what what is done above you, you know, is done is also ha also has an effect below you. Um, what you have within you is also put out and vice versa. What we do leaves an effect on our sphere of influence, whether it be a friend group, your friends at work, the community you have on online, social media, every choice you make has an effect. And then those effects create other ripple effects that then have an effect back on you. So there is a feedback loop where you affect the externals and then the externals provide an effect back on you. When we choose to act with virtue, and this I think is the most important part of this point, by choosing to act with virtue, we're gonna produce an action that can stand to lead our community to be more harmonious, be more balanced, be more virtuous. Let's say you have a friend group, right? Uh, having honesty with your friends, true good friends, by the way, will be able to bring y'all much closer to to each other, having a much more stronger friendship because now your friends know you that much more. They know what you like, what you dislike, what you stand for, what you don't stand for. And they're also able to know what your boundaries are. So they're able to respect you as a person. You're not putting on some kind of mask because you're afraid that they won't, that they won't understand you or they might hurt you, but you're allowing them to understand you. So having that virtue, that virtue of courage because you know it takes a lot for someone to be vulnerable and reveal themselves and the virtue of honesty will help you all become a much more stronger unit and just put the friend group off for the better another example can be the concept of a teacher and teaching in a in a classroom you know learning is a very complex thing especially when you're dealing with younger kids or teaching adults everyone has different ways of approaching things and essentially just with the concept of learning your brain is creating these new uh, neural pathways to try to make sense of whatever is happening. And so as a teacher, you have to exercise the virtue of patience in order to be able to work with the student, be it a child or an adult, in order to help them understand the material and essentially be better off for learning that material. Right now, I'm in my master's program for education. And one of the things that we're learning is, especially when it comes to teaching adults, is that adults uh, learn things by real, by connecting it to past experiences. And sometimes, you know, these experiences can be traumatic. They can be both positive and negative, but nevertheless, they're going to be able to um, connect these events. So by practicing the patience and learning um, how they see the world and figuring out how is what is the best way to connect things, then they're gonna be able to learn more effectively. And by practicing this virtue, you've opened up the ability for these people to learn. A third reason why a person should live a life of virtue over vice is that living a life of virtue provides stability and chaos. From what I've seen thus far in my my time here on this earth, life seems to be living or t seems to be moving in this cycle of stability and stability of peace and chaos of ebb and flow. And so there'll be times that you know things are going well and then there'll be times that they won't. By practicing a life of virtue, you're gonna be more prepared for the time those times of instability. You know, it's really easy to be a good person in the times that it's easy, in times of stability, because everything's going well. I have, you know, there's no reason to be bad. There's no reason to be mean. I can just help out my neighbor Bob because I'm, you know, we have, I have extra, you know, here, take some stuff, you know? But then when times get hard and there are the storms come in life and you don't have a reason to be virtuous or you have all the reason to indulge in vices, there are these times where you didn't have to make the choice. Do I choose to live a life of virtue? Do I choose to, you know, choose the, the more difficult path of enduring the situation of, 
uh, just exhibiting more honesty, maybe when the consequences aren't good? Or do I choose this life of vice, of short-term pleasure, of escaping the consequences of my actions, which may hurt someone else. And so by practicing this virtue, both in peacetime and in hardship, you're gonna be cultivating uh, the endurance, cultivating the character, and I guess going back, this goes back to our self-development here, you're connecting those pieces within you that will allow you to be a better person, that will allow you to endure the sto storms of life and have more senses, senses of stability in those times of instability. Whenever you know, the when the pedal hits the metal, when the feet hit the road, right? When you hit the ground running, you don't have time to truly think about, oh, you know, Epictetus said this and Epictetus said that or Marcus Aurelius said this. You know, you have to have it within you. Whatever you have within you, whatever your character is in that moment will display itself. And by practicing virtuously, by living a life of virtuously, of virtuousness, you're going to be able to become a character of virtue. You're going to become a virtuous person such that whenever it just comes to where you need to have it within you, it needs to be automatic. Automatic thing is virtuousness. The automatic thing is, is communication. It's honesty. It's justice. It's wisdom. You're not just going to be falling to vices every now, you know, every single day. You know, you're not going to be, you know, watching porn and being addicted to it just because you're lonely and you're feeling sad or maybe you've been broken up with. But you're going to deal with those emotions. You're going to deal with those things so you can heal and be a better person. Now, on this topic of instability, stability and instability, and I mentioned earlier that the Stoics advocated that virtue was all that is needed to reach eudaimonia, virtue being all that is needed to reach the sum total of human good, the sum total of human happiness. With this instability, right, these cycles of peace and chaos, of ebb and flow and all that, wealth, friends, and your health, right? It's all external. These things will come and go. You know, you can be rich one day and destitute the next. You can have all the friends in the world and then re be reduced to having no friends or maybe even just one. You know, you can be the healthiest person and then maybe one day you get into an accident, God forbid. These things will come and go. These external things you don't necessarily have a lot of control over. But by cultivating this this aspect of virtue within you, you can go through any situation and come out still being a virtuous person. Your inner self, your inner you is of character, is of virtue, is of honor. And so say when, whenever it comes time to kick the bucket, to kick the can, and you know, your, your friends, your family are telling stories about you, people will be able to say he was a virtuous person. He was an honorable person. He is something that I, that I looked up to. In that essence, you reached eudaimonia. As another example, when we take a look at the philosopher, this guy here, uh, Epictetus, you know, in his book, The Enchiridion, he started off his life as a slave. And during some time in his life, um, he became a cripple, whether it was due to his master's, his former master's abuse, or you know some injury that he su he um, he suffered, he became a cripple. And even though after he was freed, he got kicked out of Rome. He started his own school, but he still lived in poverty. He didn't necessarily have the best life in terms of was he success successful? Did he get all the women? Did he make a lot of money? We can't really say that he did all of that, but we can say that he lived a good life in the sense that he lived a virtuous life. He did his best to be the most virtuous person that he can to achieve the summum bonum, to be a good, virtuous person. And I think that is all something that we should that we should strive to. Now, of course, we're not gonna be perfect in all of this, right? We are not a stoic sage. We're gonna fail sometimes, and which is perfectly normal, right? We're gonna be tempted by vices. And some situations are too strong for us in that moment to be able to handle. But in, in getting back up and choosing to say, hey, I'm following this path of virtue. I'm still getting up. I'm not gonna lie down in vice. I'm gonna be a better person. We're gonna be better off for that because then we're practicing resiliency, practicing how do I endure the situation and still continue on being a virtuous person. I wanna know what y'all think. So let me know down in the comments uh, what you think, what it takes to live a virtuous life over one of vice. What are virtues that you think are needed to live a virtuous life to be a better person, to achieve the highest good, the eodaimonia, the summum bonum. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you liked it, share it with your family and friends. I am currently running a podcast of the same name on the STOA. Um, you can click the link below in the description to access the podcast itself, um, be it on Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And if you wanna talk uh, with other people um, of the podcast or you wanna get more content, consider following, uh, joining the Facebook page. Uh, where I'll be, I'll be putting more live streams and more content on there. Thank y'all again so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care of yourselves, be well, and stay virtuous.